Now, I had an encounter recently when I was at a church called Bethel in California, and the pastor there is Pastor Bill Johnson, and I was caught up into a visionary experience, and I was seeing a man who'd gone on to be in heaven just a few years ago named Bob Jones, who was a prophet, and he was talking to another man, and the other man's name is Melvin, and I was seeing them talking about a street address, and Bob was giving a prophetic kind of perspective. He was kind of showing about how this street address that this man had lived at in his natural life was a prophetic parallel to his family's inheritance in the future. This man ended up being Bill Johnson's father. And the prophetic word, as you'll see in just a moment, was outside the box of almost all of us. But if I'm a Christian, I only believe in Jesus. I don't believe in any other source or any other God. I'm not trying to do spiritism. I'm not trying to do necromancy, voodoo, any of these religions. I only believe in the word of God, but I'm seeing part of what's happening in the heavenly scenario. Is this possible? Is this legal, especially when I'm not pursuing seeing this? I'm just seeing a vision of what's already happening in heaven around Jesus. Watch this with me. I was in two places, two spaces at once, and I'm seeing Bob Jones in heaven. I'm not sure if it's like a literal thing or if it's just like my, a way that God wants to tell me a parable or something, but I was seeing Bob Jones talking to somebody, and I hope this makes sense. He was talking to, you know, I'm not, this is necromancy or anything. I'm not like calling on the dead. I just saw in heaven what's happening in a heavenly scenario. And I was seeing Bob Jones talk to somebody that's kind of weirding me out, but in a good way. And, uh, and, and I was looking at the person, I don't know who the person is, I've never met him, the person he's talking to, but um, I start seeing a map and I'm driving, like I'm, I'm on Olive Street and you turn right and there's Gold Street and then you turn right and there's Oak Ridge Street. Does this make sense to somebody? Your mom lives on like Oak Ridge Street? Gold, olive, olive, then you turn right, and you turn right into Gold Street, you turn right, it's Oak Ridge Street. That's exactly right. Um, so, so God's talking to somebody, but I don't think, I don't, your dad's name is Earl, but this man's name is like Alvin or Melvin or something. Wow. His dad is Melvin Earl Johnson. So Bob Jones and Melvin Earl are talking to each other. And they're talking about, um, it was a Bob Jones kind of a word because he was saying, first you gotta go down Olive Street, which is about uh, the, oil, the anointing oil, the, the anointing to press the olives into wine. And he was talking about wine. Then you have to go down um, Gold Street. And I saw your dad, now I know it's your dad. It's like I saw he lives on Gold Street now, but on, and the natural is, oh great, that makes sense. Um, but you have to go down Gold Street. You need the resources. So the anointing is going to produce the resources in this next season to get to the Oak Ridge. And, and the Oak Ridge would be the deeply planted new wineskin of a move of these long-term, you know, generational oaks. And I saw the Lord saying that there's a, there's a release. Like I said, just like a Bob Jones word. It was exactly how he would give a word. So this is, this is literal. And there's a release of... Uh, great provision that's coming out of the anointing to plant the oaks, to plant the oaks of righteousness, which is one of Bob Jones' favorite words, is the oaks of righteousness he talked about all the time. It's parabolic, so I can't explain it for you, Bill. You're going you're gonna to get it. But there's the anointing to produce the gold, to produce the oaks of righteousness is coming. And, and Bob and your dad are talking about this, reasoning over us as a leadership room, talking about it over Bethel, talking about it over Reading, that the next installment, of what God's promise is, is about to just land, superimpose over us, just superimpose over the land. And your dad is like the biggest intercessor here with, and Bob's interceding. I mean, they're like in intercession in heaven right now to bring the next purpose. You know, as a Christian, I was never expecting to see this. As a matter of fact, I was just trying to communicate the heart of God over his people. I never thought I'd be caught up into a vision and see something like this that was so fascinating and you know, Bill loved his father so much. He's a, I believe he's a seventh generation pastor and he inherited his whole calling and destiny from his father's calling and destiny. And to have something happen after your family member's dead and to be able to see him in a scenario this way where part of your inheritance is tied to that generational inheritance of pastors in your family. I know for Bill, this was a amazing moment of connection, not just natural connection, but eternal connection. I believe that God's making more and more of those connections because 
Christianity didn't begin and end with our generation, but there's so many generations that went before us to create the foundation that we're walking in right now. To honor these generations is so important to the foundation of our faith. Those who started all the way from the early church to now have paid such a big price and they didn't get to see what was promised. But through our generation and future generations, partnering with them, there's gonna be an incredible reward for Jesus given. Now, as a cloud of witnesses, I might be part of them one day, standing in fullness, looking at my granddaughters or grandson's lives or the churches or the ministries that I'm involved with now, they may be in their third or fourth generation. You better believe that I'm gonna care about those when I'm in heaven because they're part of what I planted now. You better believe that everything that God's promised me, if it wasn't fulfilled, that I'm gonna care about it, that I'm gonna be standing with Jesus and however it works, I'm gonna be saying, Jesus, look at this too. This is part of your reward. This is part of how you're gonna inherit. This is so precious to me because it's so precious to you. This is how we have to think about the cloud of witnesses, that we have advocates, that we have those who are, are almost like spiritual lawyers looking at what's on the earth and saying, look at this one too. I want a soccer mom for my team when I'm in heaven. I know we're all on the same team, but I want to look at it and say, these ones are mine too. And I believe that's what's happening right now for you, is that people that you loved are actually looking at your life because you're part of their inheritance and you're what makes their inheritance full in heaven so they can give Jesus the biggest reward possible.